Hey you! If you're enjoying Skyline Rem and want to help make it happen, you can apply to join our backstage team in the description of this video. If you don't have the time or means, don't sweat it. Subscribe, leave a like, and enjoy the video instead. Man, what the heck, dude? <sighs> of all the jobs I've had to do, this has got to be a new low. What am I supposed to be sweeping up? Excuse me? Are you Rex by chance? Yeah? Who's asking? I've been asked to deliver this letter to you. Enjoy the rest of your day! Oh, what? Dear Rex, the letter reads, I hope this letter finds you in good health. You narrow your eyes. You stare at the letter in disbelief. Did that messenger get the wrong, Rex? Who would be sending you a letter in this city? Especially a letter so fancy. Your hand traces the letters curiously. Is this calligraphy? You've never seen pen pensmanship like this. It's beautiful. Am I holding a work of art? As a representative of the Arcane Circle, it is my pleasure to cordially invite you to Aurora Alley, the center for mystic arts in the city of Arrowwind. Your interesting lineage and recent activities have caused quite a stir within our community, and I would personally delight in having the chance to speak with you. Your eyes widen. Mystic arts? That sounds awesome! I will await you within the Mage Tower in Aurora Alley. I look forward to making your acquaintance in person. Sincerely yours, Penelope Delvu. Your eyes do a double take as you finish reading the letter. Wait, what? Huh? huh? What? P Penelope Dilvox. What is that name? Still, you brush off your momentary confusion. Did you seriously just get invited to a magic district? Why didn't Ellis tell you about this place? It would have been nice to know that there were full on wizards in the city weeks ago. You can't help but feel excitement welling up inside of you, but you push it down. What if the letter isn't for you? You're still pretty new to Erwin, so how would people know about you? Especially know enough to invite you to some really cool magic place. You look up, trying to spot the messenger in the crowd, but they're long gone. You look back down at the letter and reread it, trying to take as much information from the calligraphy as possible. Eventually, you look at the envelope in your other hand, and your eyes widen. The center of the envelope would read in clear lettering, Mr. Rex, Silver-Eyed Dread. Yes! You pump your fists up in the air in excitement. That pretty much settles it, right? This has to be yours! You're willing to stomach the existence of other Rexes. After all, the city's massive, but how many of them also happen to be Silver-Eyed Dreads? Well, whatever that means. You celebrate to yourself in the open streets, looking back down at the letter. Aurora Alley, here I- Wait a second. 
You pause, looking back down at the street. You're still supposed to be sweeping this place. Are you allowed to leave now? This invitation seems to be important, not to mention more interesting. Where were you even supposed to be sweeping? You've been out here for an hour and it looks the exact same. Maybe I should... Nah, I've swept enough. Without a second thought or a single regret, you dust off your hands, placing the professional letter into your pocket. You prop the broom up against the wall of a building, making sure it doesn't fall over. And then you rush off. Okay! Aurora Alley, here I come! Wherever you are! Maybe if I just run in one direction, I'll get there eventually. Hey guys! How are you all doing? New to chat, you can call me Mellow. Hello, Mellow. I'll try to remember that that's what you'd prefer to be called by. Er, called. Oh, thank you for the sub, though, Mellow. And Graham, thank you for the two gifted subs. I really appreciate it. Welcome, any new chatters. Hello, everybody. Yeah, I hope you're having a great day today. We're back! And we're in the city. I was just sweeping the street for one of the stupid jobs Alice has been giving me. That I've been working on for the past several days. They stopped getting interesting. You know, hunting down books, that was cool. Right? I, I run around and I'm looking for like a, like a specific book. And then it turns there's an evil magic guy. And then I beat up the evil magic guy. That was cool. Alright? None of the other jobs I've gotten have been like that at all. They've all been like, oh, trim these hedges. Or, oh, sweep this street. Who sweeps a street? What does sweeping a street do? <sighs> anyway. Uh, so now we're going. We're running around. Hi, Nissa. Hi, Flair. Hi, Ben. Hello, Somber... Somber skis? Skies? I don't know how to pronounce that. Hi, Nova. Hi, Quintus. Hi, Cat Bag Graham. Hi, Wolfie Gray. Hi, Jekadeth. Hi, Void Temper. Hi, Rose Meadow. Hi, Just Jay. Hello, Kitty Joy. Hello, Demos. Hello, In the Shadows I Thrive. Hi, Marionette Girl. Hi, Ava. Hi, Queen. Hi, Phoenix. Hi, Toast. <laughs> Hi, Ch 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 Chave? Chave John? Hi, Grimlock. Well, yeah, I guess to make the streets clean. Huh. Well, let's just keep going. It's got to be around here somewhere, right? Some... We're just looking for a special place. It's an al... Well, you sheepishly pause in your tracks, making a realization. You got so excited, you forgot to ask for directions. You have no idea where this Aurora Alley's supposed to be. If Alice were here, she'd probably call you a moron for that. You look around the area for anyone who could possibly help you. Uh, eventually, your eyes settle on an older woman who would be standing near one of the stalls that lines Astra Centrum's main street. She seems preoccupied in her work, adjusting various items on display and fiddling with curtains and banners. You approach the woman, clearing your throat as to not startle her. She pauses in her work and turns back to look at you. Hello there, young man. What can I do for you? Uh, I, I'm looking for Aurora Alley. You know where that is? Aurora Alley, the woman repeats. <laughs> of course I know where that is. She chuckles a bit. Fancy yourself a mage, eh? Well, I can't say I'm surprised. You seem like quite the magical young man already, don't you? What, seriously? Cool, thanks, miss! Now, you're going to want to follow the main street all the way down, the woman instructs. And you'll want to cut across the square and continue forward. Aurora Alley will be to the right, a couple of buildings down. It's a particularly gated-off portion of the city, but if you follow the sounds of magic spells and university students, you should have no problem finding it. Huh. All right. She holds up a hand. You be careful, all right? My husband once visited that alley, and he said he had to stay sharp to duck under rogue spells. And with his back and such, she shakes her head. But you look like a fine young man. I'm sure you'll have nothing to worry about. I'm slightly more nervous now, but thanks for the help! Oh, I'm so freaking excited! Okay, so we just need to get to the, uh, square. Okay, if we fall on the main street, surely we can't get lost, right? Surfer, thank you for the sub! And Flay, thank you for the hydrate. Appreciate it. Let's see. Hmm... We need to get to the square first, so we can just go ahead and, I guess, start making our way down there, first and foremost. And then we can start trying to orient ourselves. It's past the square on the right. Okay. Hmm. God, I'll never get over how huge this city is and how bustling it is, too. There's so many people on every corner. It's 
truly is like enormous. You know, I wonder, have you guys ever been inside of like a huge city? I can only think of a couple times really been inside of it, but I've never had to like walk around one until now. It's pretty insane and such a unique feeling too. I feel like it's the first few times you walk through it, your head's craned straight up looking at all the rooftops and everything. But then once you get used to it, I imagine don't look up a lot. I mean, that certainly seems like that applies for everyone in this city. All of their heads are like pointed down. Meanwhile, I feel like my neck's craned up at all times. Wait, okay. So once it's past this square, she said it was to the right a couple buildings over. Hmm. It's so maybe here-ish? We could try heading over here. Oh gosh, it's already a maze. Um, maybe this way. Hmm. The canal's over there. Oh? What is this it? Whoa! Okay, this is definitely it. I hear what she means. Whoa! Check this place out. Wait, that's so wicked. Look at it. What? Oh, hello there. There's people and they got robes. And oh. You pass by two boys about your age. One would hold open a book in his hand, so the other would have some sort of stick in his hand. Is that a want? Come on, dude. This is one of the introductory spells. I thought you said you practiced this at home. I did practice at home. I opened the book and skimmed over the words with my wand in my hand. See? Practice. That's the literal exact opposite of practice. This is going to be on the exam, you know. Relax, I've got it. It's literally in the first chapter. They wouldn't put a hard spell in the first chapter of a textbook, would they? Saying dumb stuff like that, are you sure you even skimmed it? Huh. Well, good luck on your exam, I guess. Huh. Explore it so pretty. Yeah, I think I do want to look around. Look at that. I wonder who that is. It's a, it's a statue, and they've got like a big old stick in their hand. Is that a staff? Huh. Looks like a mini Hogwarts, yeah, maybe. <laughs> uh, excuse me. Oh, they're also checking out the statue. What's back this way? Whoa, look at the lamps. They're blue. The lanterns everywhere else were not blue, but this one is blue. Huh. Uh, hello. You notice a young man walking quickly through the district. He has a hefty leather-bound book in his hands, which he's trying to read very carefully. His nose would be so buried, he practically runs into you as he passes. He closes his eyes. Okay, um, vim nature, uh, mm, vim nature ad me defend, oh God, what was the next word? He stops in his tracks, looking back down at the book. However, his eyes widen. Wait, it's defendendum? When was there an extra N? He hangs his head in defeat. No, I've been saying it wrong this entire time. Fantastic! Like I have a quiz on this in two hours. Oh. Yikes. Good luck with that. Oh, I went into it again. Good luck with that. Well, it seems like a dead end. That person's in front of a, this building. Is that a chimney or a tower? I can't tell. Huh. It's this way. Hmm. Maybe around here? Oh, look at the tree! The tree is so pretty! It's purple! That is a purple tree! Well, oh! You notice a young girl standing near the windows of one of the buildings. She would look into the window in awe, her gaze fixated on an item directly behind the glass. Oh my god! Is that a second generation runic augmentor? And they're selling it at that price?! She looks to the left and right quickly, as if to ensure that no one else in the area caught sight of her find. This is going to make my room look like six class so much easier. Hopefully my parents will be too mad about me blowing all that food money on this. Yikes. Well, you do you, I guess. If it helps you out. Huh. Well, look at that. A building. It's a building. It's an arch with a tower on it. Look at it. There's two buildings connected through an arch with a tower on it. That's wicked. The purple tree. Huh. These two people are chatting. You notice a young man and woman standing out in the open. The young man would have a confident look on his face as he holds up a scroll. 
Look what I bought. No way, you did not. I did a master tier scroll of lightning. Wait, did you say master tier? Yup. Cost me an arm and a leg, but it'll be totally worth it when I can wipe the grin off that jerk's face. You realize that scrolls are only one-time use, right? And do you even know how to activate it? I heard that only the real experts can translate those scrolls and read out the spells. Hey, ye of little faith, the young man chuckles. Just watch and learn. I don't want to be nearby when he possibly inevitably explodes. What's this place? Look at that! It's like up an incline. There's like a whole different area over there. Huh. That's pretty cool. Anyway, that's not what we're looking for, I don't think. Hmm. Oh! As you continue to wander the busy streets, your attention is overtaken by some nearby commotion. Two individuals who begin to leave the building to your right, and although neither of them would be visibly causing trouble, they're certainly making their presence known. I must say that sale was absolutely incredible, Solus! To think we would be that lucky to purchase the last pouches of Lapis Lazuli at such a tremendous price! Ooh, Somber, look it, look it! The blue dust is so shiny in the sunlight! Hang on a moment, Solus! We cannot hold it up to the light or else we'll lose the brilliant arcane luminescence! Here, allow me to hold the pouch! Huh? You look in the direction of the two individuals with narrow eyes. The taller one would be a young man, possibly no older than you. He has light brown hair pulled back into a loose bun behind him. His clothes appear rather professional. They'd wear a pair of thin glasses on the ridge of his nose. Next to him would be a shorter girl with blue hair. However, you immediately find yourself distracted by the cat ears and the fluffy cat tail on her person that you don't pick up any other details about her. They walk through the streets with such confidence, man. Maybe familiarity? They could know where the mage tower is. Uh, excuse me? You jog over to catch up with their quick walking pace. The pair pause in their tracks, glancing back at you as you rush over. Immediately, you notice the young man's eyes widen in surprise, while the cat girl's tail begins to slowly sway back and forth in... Anticipation? Uh, sorry, do either of you guys know where the... Oh my god, this is brilliant! The young man interjects loudly, so loud that you're actually taken aback. So pretty! The cat girl cheers. The pair would quickly approach you, looking into you, looking into you in awe. Never in my life have I thought I would encounter a silver on dread! This is absolutely incredible! The young man announces. Uh, uh, uh hello? Look at how sparkly they are! The cat girl purrs, standing up on her tiptoes to stare at your eyes. You're all glittery and shiny! Please, if you wouldn't mind answering a small handful of questions! The young man would literally drop everything he was previously carrying, pulling out a notepad from his jacket pocket. I, uh, uh, I, I, I just... Can you confirm your possession of enhanced eyesight? I, I mean, I don't think so. Did you always have the pretty eyes? The cat girl interjects. Or did you use a cool magic spell and then poof? Uh, well, that's kind of a complicated question. To your knowledge, are you genetically related to the perilous bloodline of the Drabo's Odium Dynasty? I don't even know whatever that means. Do you have a tail? Okay, I know the answer to that one, at least. Don't be silly, Solus. The young man leans back, looking down at her with a quizzical expression. There are no records of dreads possessing tails. How would you know, huh? The cat girl sticks out her tongue. What if the silver ones are different? I highly doubt the rarity is due to their tail growing capabilities. However, the young man pauses. You don't have tail growing capabilities, right? Uh, no? Brilliant! The young man writes notes vigorously into his notebook. How magnificent! This is truly a fantastic day! Wouldn't you agree, Solus? Somber. I'm hungry. We will purchase food on the way home. However, I still have 23 more questions to ask. Okay, okay. I don't think I have the answers to any of them, man. Alright? I don't know a thing about silver eyed dreads. I two pause, glancing at one another and then back at you. I beg your pardon, the young man, somber, would blink in surprise. But knowing stuff is easy, the cat girl, Solus, beams. I know all kinds of stuff. I, 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 I'm kind of new to this world. You were just born? Solus gasps. Somber, do silver eye dreads age really fast? Not to my knowledge. Somber brings a hand to his chin, turning back to you. Do you age incredibly quickly? No, okay, no, 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 nothing like that. All right, I just, I fell out of the sky like a month ago and you what? 
The pair shout at the same time. Somber's face lights up. This is absolutely magnificent! He exclaims. You must tell me everything! Don't spare a single detail! Did it hurt? Or was it like slow falling? Where did you fall from? Did you burst into flames like a meteor? Flitzolus jumps forward, grabbing onto your shoulders and almost pulling you down to the ground in her excitement. Ah, okay, I don't know! I, I don't know how it happened! The two of them pause as you try to step away, overwhelmed by the amount of energy in front of you. Somber would step forward and place a hand on Solus' shoulder. Solus, do not pounce on strangers! Even if those strangers are exceptionally fascinating individuals! He states. Aww, it's no fun though. The cat girl pouts, stepping away from you to cling to Somber's jacket. He turns back to you, adjusting his glasses. I hope you can forgive her excitement and my limitless interest. We've simply never met someone such as yourself, you see. Uh, yeah, it's fine. Sorry I didn't have any answers for you, though. You have no need to apologize. In fact, despite your lack of knowledge, I still find your tale to be absolutely fascinating. If you have the time, I would love to hear more about your experience falling from the sky. Or perhaps you would be able to answer some simpler questions regarding your distinctive ocular biology. However, before you can open your mouth to continue, the young man shakes his head. Oh my word! Where are my manners? We've yet to properly introduce ourselves! My name is Somber, and this here is my sister! I'm Solis! The cat girl jumps up, waving. Hello! Uh, <laughs> it's nice to meet you guys. Uh, I'm Rex. What a fantastic name! Somber loudly proclaims. What are you doing in Aurora Alley? Solis asks. Are you doing cool magic stuff with your gauntlet? Let me see, let me see! Uh, well, uh, uh, actually, I was invited here. I I'm supposed to go to the magic tower or something? Ah, of course! I would expect nothing less from an individual for your uniqueness! Somber motions to a building nearby, which you can only presume is the tower. You glance in that direction, your gaze slowly tilting your head higher and higher up as you observe the structure in its entirety. Whoa! That is a tower, all right. Quite the tower, indeed! There's so much cool stuff in there, too! Solus grins, her tail swaying happily. And if you're lucky, sometimes you can see fireworks shooting out from the balcony! Those aren't fireworks, Solus. Awesome! So how do I- Hey! A familiar voice calls from the tower entrance. You watch the door of the tower get thrown open as a young girl in robes rushes out in a panic. A small creature would chase her out, flapping its grayish wings aggressively. Who said you could take my feathers for some dumb alchemy project? I put effort into growing these out, and you got the audacity to try and snag a couple? You got another thing coming if you thought I would let you get away with it! I'm sorry! The girl shouts, quickly gathering her things from the ground and running away. I didn't mean to anger you! <laughs> Harper? A creature huffs a bit, landing on the ground. <laughs> Lousy kids. Now, as soon as she hears your name, though, her feathered ears perk up, and she looks in your direction. Her entire expression brightens as soon as she sees you. Oh, hey, guy! She flaps over to you excitedly, landing on your shoulders with a huge grin on her face. Look, who decided, finally decided to visit. <laughs> Wait, visit? You live out here. Where else do you think a telepathic harpy was gonna live? She raises an eyebrow. In a cave? She glances towards Somber and Solus. And I see you've already got yourself a couple connections. You're not trying to replace me, huh, guy? Bird! Solus's eyes dilate. Solus, no! Somber quickly puts up a hand to stop her as she prepares to bounce. Please excuse us. She has the tendency to get overly excited about flying creatures. She seems to get excited about a lot of things. So, where are you headed, huh? Hyper smiles at you, leaning forward on your arm to stare into your eyes. I believe he stated that he was headed to the Mage Tower. Somber says, is that correct? Uh, yeah, that's what the invite says. Invite? Hyper pauses. She considers your words before her eyes would widen. Oh, invite! That's today! Man, why does no one tell me anything? Hyper flies off your arm, motioning with her head towards the tower. Sorry, you two, but I gotta borrow him. Come on then, guy. Let's get going. Perhaps we shall meet again another time! I still have several more questions to ask! Somber waves at you. Yeah, sure. Uh, we can talk more later. Uh, take care, you two. You as well, Rex! You wave at Solus and Somber as they depart before turning back to Harper. Well, aren't you coming? Harper grins. Uh, yep, uh, right behind you. Oh, why do I feel like I just ran a marathon talking to those two? Huh, that was <laughs> almost an interesting encounter that I never could have expected. I'm pretty sure with the energy between those two, you could power an entire city. Whew. Let's see. Here's the tower, all right. I just gotta go up it. Huh. 
I feel like I'm gonna say Hall about 13 more times. I feel the exact same way. <laughs> I think I might as well. It, it's inbound, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Still, let's uh, head in. Ooh, ooh! Oh wow, this is cozy. Look at this. There are candles and lamps and so many books. Look at the books! Huh. Cool painting. More books. Oh, is this like a little work nook? Look at this! Dang, man! This place is huge! It's like the library, but not. Wait, is this like a library, but for magic books? <gasps> no, I shouldn't touch. Look, but don't touch. Use eyes, no touch. That's the, th this is the Rex way. Eyes, no touch, all right? We gotta discipline ourselves. Okay. Oh. You enter the tower quietly, taking a moment to look around. The first floor would be reminiscent of a lobby, with a staircase to your right and a desk directly in front of you. Several people would stand around the area, taking a couple books off the shelves or sitting in the lounge chairs. Harper enters casually, waddling across the ground towards the stairs. She uses her wing to wave at everyone. Hope you're all right with stairs, guy, Harper states. We got a good amount of climbing to do. This place is awesome! Eh, I guess it ain't that bad. The creature shrugs her shoulders. She flies up to perch on your arm. I mean, as far as magic towers go, I'd rate it a solid four out of five stars. She sighs. Ah, there are barely any doors. It's freezing cold at night. Makes my feathers shiver. And not to mention the people. I swear, I hang around here every day of the week, and some people... Wait, you live here? Didn't you already ask that question outside? I told you I did. Why are you so shocked again, huh? I, I thought you meant more like in the district, not, not in the tower. Only the best for the best. The heartbeat giggles to herself, placing a wing over her mouth cheekily. <laughs> Anyways, that's besides the point. You said you got invited here, right? Uh, yeah, you know why? I guess you could say I got a couple ideas, but I'll leave that to my friend to explain. Wait, your friend? Is that the same friend you talked about before? Sure is, she nods. I told her about you the day we met. She seemed pretty interested in you after I told her about your eyes and your cool gauntlet. So, is she the one who sent this letter? You take the letter out of your pocket and offer it to Harper. The harpy narrows her eyes and stares at the letter before giggling. <laughs> and that's it, all right, she grins. Man, she said she was thinking of inviting you, but she didn't tell me any letter or anything. I swear, she tells me squat. <laughs> she shakes her head, nodding towards the stairs up the tower. Now, let's get moving. This tower ain't gonna climb itself, remember? Right. Huh. Oh, it's gonna be a lot of stairs. It's a tall tower. That's fine. Oh, look, there's shelves even on the stairs. That's crazy. How do you grab those books? How do you grab those books? You gotta reach. You gotta really reach. Look at that plant. Huh. Look at this. Oh, it's like a little reading corner. Oh, sh I should be quiet. I don't want to disturb them. Shh, 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 shh. Uh. All right, and that's it. All right. What? Oh, oh. You notice a couple of individuals working around the study room. Hey, did you find your book yet, man? No, I can't find it anywhere! I swear I left it here after the last lesson. Uh, no worries. Maybe the front desk has it? I don't know. Man, that book cost me old silver coin! You think someone stole it? Stole it? I mean, lots of people are ta taking that course. I wouldn't put it past any of the other students in the slightest. Let's just keep looking, alright? Before you start pointing fingers. Oh, sorry, man. Hope you find your book. This, this person's pacing over here. Whoa, check this out. Whoa, check that out! It looks so dorky, but it's so cool at the same time. Maybe magic or Harper helps reach those books. Yeah, you're right. It might be Harper. Look at this. Well, is, are those pages flipping themselves? Oh, I thought it was for a second. Oh, they are! Wait, that's wicked! This place is so freaking cool. I'm gonna flip, dude. It's so amazing. Uh, excuse me, I just want to look over here. Oh, that's the uh, street. Okay. So this is the edge of the alley. Aurora Alley, huh? Wow. Well, what's this? 
Oh, it's like a little, it's also a little reading nook. Look, there's like a little chair you can hide. Hide from the world. Hold on. I'm hidden. No one can see me. <laughs> What's up here? Whoa. Whoa! You walk past the ritual in confusion. You can't help but pause in your ascent to watch the various mages gathered around the floating... Cube? Uh, what do we do next again? Come on, didn't you read the instructions? I mean, kind of. Look, all you need to do is make sure the matrix doesn't destabilize while I set up the candles, alright? Got it. How do I keep it from destabilizing? Oh my god. And I suddenly don't want to be in the same area in case that, you know, destabilizes. Um... <laughs> What is that? Forbidden juice? I want to drink it. Wait, that's a bad idea. But I want to. Have you ever- Maybe this is just me. Have you ever been into like a chemistry lab and you see like some like colored like liquids inside of bottles and stuff and you're like, man, that looks like, like a strawberry beverage because it's like pink or something. And you're like, oh, I should drink that. <laughs> it's the same instinct I'm getting here. It's like, I wonder what happens if I just take a sip. <laughs> don't don't it's a unanimous don't all right got it fine no drink look only you're right you're right no no touch only look oh what's this okay let's keep going up i guess this is an interesting work table huh all right let's keep heading up hmm Ooh, they like flowers and stuff you look at all of the various flowers and plants growing out of the wooden troughs. There'd be a girl tending to the plants, watering them with a wand, much to your surprise. She hums a bit as she works. Harper seizes next to you. Uh, let's get out of this room quick, guy, all right? I'm allergic to pollen. Without another word, the harpy flies up the stairs to escape, sneezing once more on the way up. All right. Uh, well, fortunately, I don't think my allergies are acting up. <laughs> I take it back. <laughs> this is a really cool room. Look at the water. That's so pretty. Oh, I don't want to disturb her in her work. We'll leave her be. More steps. Huh. More, uh, tables. Oh, whoa. I see what Harper means by a draft. How high up are we? Whoa, heck. Okay. I could see a lot of the city from here. Th that is pretty bonkers. Well, what's up with that? And that looks wicked. Okay. What's in here? You peek into the library room, noticing several individuals sitting around a study table with their books open and a notepad to their side. The room would be so quiet that you'd be able to even hear a pin drop. That is... Until a young man rushes past you and into the room loudly, panting. Ah, 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 sorry, I'm late. Shh! The other readers snap at him. Oh, 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 sorry! He awkwardly takes a seat, pulling a notebook out of a backpack. Uh, what are you guys working on? Shh! Okay, okay, we gotta look in here quietly. Whoa! Look at this. This is pretty cool. It's like a little reading study room. What's this? Whoa, it's like a balcony. I can see all of the alley from here. I can even see beyond it, huh? That's crazy. The view. Jump, jump. I'm not gonna jump. There's no way. Nah, that looks painful. It's the purple tree. Huh. This is pretty cool. Oh, this is probably what uh, Tolus meant about them shooting spells off here. Or, sorry, fireworks. <laughs> That's so cool. Magic. Oh, sorry. Magic. I'm so excited. Oh, let's go this way. There's no real for a reason. Maybe some people can fly. Well, Harper can. All right. <clears throat> Keep heading up. Oh, What? Oh, this is like a little garden! Wait, this is awesome! 
There's a tree in the tower. A actual growing living tree. There are multiple. <laughs> Wait, that's awesome. How <laughs> did they get trees up here? And there are little seats. Wait, this place is amazing. Actually beautiful. Oh. Harper stops in the middle of the courtyard, carefully landing on top of the table to your left. She folds her wings inward before giving you a nod. Alrighty then, her office is just around that corner. She should be waiting for you at her, f uh, at her desk. Oh, thanks Harper. Don't mention it, guy. Now, usually I'd stick around and maybe try to listen in on your talk, but I got a couple of other things to on my to-do list, so I'm gonna have to get going. Uh, more errands? You could say that. <laughs> and the creature laughs. Good luck, Rex! Without another word, Harper hops off the table and begins to waddle back down the stairs. Alright. Let's go check out what's this way. Hello, Rex. It's a pleasure to finally make your acquaintance. Hello, Rex. The woman smiles at you, her hands clasped behind her back. It's a pleasure to finally make your acquaintance. Uh... Hi. Please, have a seat. We have much to discuss. The woman waves her hand towards the chair in front of the desk, while she herself would sit in the larger, elegant chair opposite. All right. You awkwardly pull out a chair and sit down, resting your palms on your knees. You stare at her for some time while she situates herself in her chair, lacing her fingers together and resting her chin in her hands. I hope that Aurora Alley has treated you well. Y yeah, it's very, uh, lively. She chuckles. <laughs> no need to be so nervous. I'm certain your mind is absolutely brimming with questions. You're free to ask whatever you'd like. I did invite you here to talk, after all. So, your Penelope Dilvox. Immediately, her expression falters. Her eyes snap in your direction, and she tilts her head. I'm sorry. What? She blinks in utter shock at your statement. How, how did you... It's Penelope Delvu. Oh! Yeah, that sounds so much cooler. You don't say. Her smile becomes a bit more strained. Okay, so, uh, so, wh why did you invite me here? She clears her throat, trying to shake off her momentary shock and horror at your terrible pronunciation. You see, Rex, Harper spoke quite highly of you when you first met. Her description of your appearance and your character was rather interesting, to say the least. It's not every day that someone is able to make such a lasting impression on her. But is this about me having silver eyes? That is one of the reasons, certainly. But it is not the exclusive reason. People outside were talking about that, too. They were interested in my eyes. You must forgive the fanfare. Scholars such as ourselves are merely intrigued. After all, it's not every day that we see someone like you just... Walking around the city. Yeah, but why is that? Uh, what do silver eyes mean? You don't know. She raises an eyebrow. Uh, I don't really know anything. At all. You lean back, avoiding her gaze. I kind of fell out of the sky. So when it comes to what it means to have silver eyes, I'm pretty much in the dark. Her eyes sparkle at that information. Fell from the sky. Yeah. Hmm. She leans forward, her smile fully returning to her features. It seems my intuition was right, then. I knew that you would be an intriguing one, Rex. Uh, thanks. <laughs> the main thing you should know when it comes to your eyes, Penelope raises her hand, pointing two fingers directly at your face, is that the color is quite rare. Well, not impossible. Silver-eyed treads are incredibly scarce. 
Therefore, when people do manage to come across one, you can hardly blame them for being awestruck. Well, it's probably because they've never seen it before. I get it. Precisely, she nods. Okay. Uh, then what about the other reasons for calling me here? Ah, yes, of course. Penelope would lean back at her chair, leaning down to open a drawer beneath her desk. You, hear, would he, you would hear papers shuffling within the desk for a moment before eventually she withdraws a familiar book, a book with red accents and a skull on the front cover. Do you recognize this book? Well, that's the Crimson Rights book from the one guy! Indeed. Penelope holds up the book carefully, ensuring it stays sealed. This book is incredibly volatile, and if it were to fall into the wrong hands, it could even be dangerous. You, however, she places the book down, returning her attention fully to you. You managed to defeat whoever was wielding it with ease. Uh, he said something about an alacrum edict. Do you know what that is? Yes, I do, she nods. The alacrum edict is a conglomeration of individuals, uh, particularly mages, who use dark magic such as the spells in this book. They've been threatening Erwin for quite some time, threatening to overtake the city of Unity and bring forth greater darkness. Yeesh. Sounds bad. It is, she sighs. But, thanks for, to your efforts, that did not come to pass. As you can see, you already have quite the impressive resume. And on behalf of the Arcane Circle, I'd like to thank you for your endeavors. No problem, I guess. Uh, wait. Arcane Circle? That is the group I'm associated with, Rex, Penelope states as she gestures grandiosely. The Arcane Circle is an organization of like-minded people who have a talent for the mystic arts and a thirst for magic knowledge. Well, that sounds so cool! I want more magic knowledge! <laughs> then I believe you may be in luck. She crosses her arms, leaning against the wall. Your existence in Erwin is a silver-eyed dread, and your recent circumstances have caught our eye. She enlaces her hands, walking over to the window. And personally, I find every facet of you quite intriguing. Therefore, I would like to make an arrangement with you and invite you to my next magic class. What, you hold classes? <laughs> Naturally. As a representative of the Arcane Circle, I would consider myself quite the gifted and knowledgeable mage. I am not only one of the professors at the Erwin University, but I additionally hold lessons within this very tower to cater to more hands-on experiences. That's amazing, but I, I don't have any money, so I, I can't really pay for a class. She walks over to her chair. <laughs> well, for this class, don't worry about the money. I'm interested in witnessing your capabilities for myself, and given your recent activity, I see no harm in being your teacher for a day. She sits back down. So, what do you say? If it doesn't cost money... And heck yeah! Sign me up! Wonderful. She picks up a quill from a well of ink on her desk and a sheet of parchment from her drawers. She begins to write a note on the parchment. You notice her handwriting would not be nearly as perfect as it was in her letter to you, although she uses the same calligraphy characters. In that case, I'll mark you down as an attendance so the front desk doesn't give you any trouble. We'll be meeting at 10 o'clock in the morning, all right? Sounds great. I'll be there. I look forward to teaching you, Rex. She waves her hand towards the exit. You're free to go. I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, uh, see you tomorrow. Wait, uh, before I go, I can keep this, right? She pauses, raising an eyebrow. You remove the letter from your pocket, holding it up to her. Uh, the letter you sent me? It's the most... Like, I've never seen writing this neat. Like, did you seriously write this yourself? It's beautiful. Immediately, you notice her face light up, her cheeks mildly glowing. <laughs> well, of course, you can keep it. It is your letter, after all. I'm... <clears throat> I'm glad you like it. Sweet. Thanks, Penelope. However, you notice as you leave, Penelope would minorly adjust in her chair, scooting it slightly to the left. You glance in that direction curiously, noticing a number of small crumpled up papers stacked in that corner, all of them headed with Dear Rex.
Sweet! We have magic lessons! I'm gonna learn how to do magic! With This is wicked! I'm so excited! Ooh, I cannot wait for tomorrow. I don't know. I'm gonna sleep tonight. Oh, and then I'm gonna go to sleep, and then I'm gonna have to go through my day, and then I'm gonna have to go back to sleep, and then I'm gonna go through my day again, and then I'm gonna be able to get here. I'm so excited. I am so, so ready to learn magic. This is so hype. Ooh. Do we trust Cantaloupe the MILF wizard? <laughs> Cantaloupe? <laughs> She seems nice. I guess... I guess the Admiral must have given her the Crimson Rites book. Or maybe the Arcade Circle? I guess that makes sense. If they're magic people, then... I guess that is exactly their department to deal with. You're a wizard, Rex. You're right. I can be the wizard. The wizard of Oz. I can be the wizard of Rem. <laughs> To serve you do arson? I can already do arson! <laughs> but I don't want to do arson in the city. If I get kicked out, Ellis will arson me. Never heard someone so excited to go through days. Well, when every day is freaking awesome, then why wouldn't I be excited? Sleeping is so fun. It's actually so fun now. But then I go to sleep, I go to the other world, and then I get to do my business there, and then I get to come back here! And then I get to do my business here, and then I get to go back there, and it's just back and forth. It's never a dull day. Never. Rex, in your lesson, you're gonna make a big boom. I'm what we call a natural. Alright, chat. Alright, doubters. I am a natural. Therefore, I obviously am just going to nail it as soon as I get it, alright? You know, I, I nailed the fire punch technique pretty well. I definitely can't incinerate things as hard as Alice, but I, I, I think I nailed the technique pretty well. I will try not to die, Quintus. I'll do my best. Lies at Slater? Why are you lying? I'm not lying! What do you mean? Name one loss. Alright, Na name one fail. I, I, I count nothing but successes in my ledger. Nothing but straight W's. <laughs> ah, ye of little faith, chat. Ye of little faith. I mean, did you straight up die? Yeah, but then I didn't. I undied. That's gotta count for something, right? That, that's gotta be a W. <laughs> Hey, you! A voice interrupts your thoughts. You glance in the direction of the voice quickly, although the huge smile doesn't leave your face. An older man with a beard would stand outside one of the main street homes, with his arms crossed and a broom in his hand. You're that Rex kid, right? Yeah, what's up? Weren't you the one sweeping up the streets around here? He motions to the street with the broom. In that moment, all the memories of your initial job flood your mind. With all the excitement in Aurora Alley, you totally forgot about your sweeping gig! Oh... Yeah. Uh. I thought I asked you to let me know when you were done. The man frowns, crossing his arms. He motions to the broom. But then I found this old thing leaning against the nearby wall, and you were nowhere in sight. I'm gonna assume you finished then, right? Uh. Yes. The man raises an eyebrow, looking down at the ground carefully. You bite your lip. You don't even know you're supposed to be sweeping, so you don't- you know for a fact that- it Looks great! Wow! Wait, I'm so sorry- wait, what? Looks like we had a real pro on our hands. The street looks perfect! A man continues to praise you. Good job there, kid. Here, I already know I paid you for the work, but here's a little extra. Consider it a token of my appreciation. He rubs his lower back. I've been able to sweep up lately with all the back pain I've been getting, so you really did me a solid. Oh, uh, wow! Uh, thanks! Thanks for the help! See you around! And with that, the man would take his broom and enter his home once more, closing the door behind him. You stand there, holding your token in disbelief. What was I even sweeping? 
Have a good day! Alright, I guess you did a good job. It looks the same! Alright, you know what? Maybe, maybe I just don't have the perceptive eye. <laughs> maybe I need glasses. Cool. That's another job nailed. Sweet! <laughs> okay, I can see Rex only takes one tomorrow will be a face. <laughs> <laughs> Should have kept the Bruin of Flight is going. Oh, you're right. I could have kept it. Maybe then P Pen P P Penelope, that's it. Penelope could have taught me how to fly on the broom. That would have been awesome. Woohoo! And Ellis won't be upset with us. Oh, this is going to be so happy. Uh, this is going to be so hype. I'm, I'm so happy. I'm pleased. Okay, um, the daily struggle. Which one's the registry? Then which one's the ta- it's this one. This one's the tavern. It's right here. This is the tavern. No, not a doubt in my mind. This is the tavern and in. Let's see. Ah, here we go. Home sweet home. Let's see. Alice! I'm coming back! I made it back! Yo, what's up? You walk back into your room confidently, closing the door behind you. Yo! Alice calls from her side of the room. You glance over to find her at the desk, her feet up on the table and several documents and papers in her hands. Dude, Alice! It's such a cool day, you got no idea! Oh yeah? Her tone indicates that she's not entirely listening. In fact, she doesn't even look at you. She continues to look over the papers with narrow eyes. I just got enrolled in a magic class! What? Immediately you steal your attention as she tosses the papers on the desk, looking directly at you. What do you mean you enrolled in a magic class? Uh, I mean, I enrolled in a magic class. Are you out of your mind? She motions to the papers in front of her. Does my financing mean nothing to you? What makes you think we have enough coins in the budget for you to get magic lessons, huh? Money isn't even a problem. It's a free lesson. How did you manage to learn a free lesson, huh? Your job was literally just to sweep a road. She crosses her arms. Oh, I swear, I leave you alone for a day and suddenly you're out around getting free magic class lessons. You didn't follow cultists around again, did you? No, 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 no. This one is legit. I got invited to Aurora Alley. Isn't that the district with all the magic stuff in it? Yep. And I met a member of the Arcane Circle. The what? They're like this group of people, you, you know, who know magic. You explain clumsily. And they do stuff like uh, study and cast spells. Pfft. They don't sound all that cool to me. Well, they said they'd give me a free lesson, which is very cool. Alice scoffs, rolling her eyes. If it was a free lesson you wanted, I could have taught you magic. Yo, yeah, last time I asked you to teach me, you set a bush on fire. I was teaching you to incinerate leaves in a single punch. I can already do that, Alice. Whatever, she huffs, standing up from her chair and sitting on her bed, her back to you. Enjoy your new teacher while you can. I see how it is. Are you pouting? Why would I be pouting? I don't even care, Alice states, crossing her arms stubbornly. Right. Well, my class is tomorrow. Did you want to come with me? I think I'll pass. She sighs, glancing back at you. I don't need some experts telling me the do's and don'ts of my own magic. You can knock yourself out. She lays down, resting her arms behind her head. Besides, someone has to stay here and figure out our next move. We still gotta find a way back to get back to Ren. She glances at you. That's still the plan, right? Or did you forget about that? I didn't forget. You can stay here, then. Mm-hmm. She closes her eyes. It's getting late. You should get some sleep before your little lesson. Or whatever your version of sleep is. Right. Have a good night, Alice. <laughs> Alrighty. She doesn't want cool magic lessons. That's on her. I will happily take all the magic lessons for myself. Even if it's just one. But it's gonna be a cool one. Maybe I'll learn a new technique. I have a fire punch. What else can I learn? Maybe a, maybe a flamethrower. That'd be cool if I could just be like, Psh, and just spray out beams of fire, like 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 a little hand flamethrower. That would be wicked. Ugh. I just gotta sleep. 
And then when I get back here, it'll be the next day. And all I gotta do is run over. That's gonna be so exciting. <sighs> Alright. Until then. Uh, wait. What is my, uh, button? I think it's this one. No. Is it, is it, is it, is it, uh, this one? No. Is it this one? No. This one. I'm back! That was such an easy, that was short rest. I, I I went through my day, I did things, I finished doing the things, and now we're back! Oh, Alex is still asleep. Maybe, maybe I shouldn't be shouting. Hello? You glance towards Alice as you finish getting ready to leave. It seems she's still fast asleep, snoring loudly in her bed. Even in her sleep, her eyebrows are furrowed. Certain that if she were awake, she'd be glaring at you. You decide not to wake her up. Yeah, that's fine. Brother, you were lucky. Oh, it sleeps like a log. Yeah. And do we have everything that we need? Cool book. Our spell. Key. Julius coin. Recipe book. Kylan's instructions. The boar hide. I think we're set. We have everything we need to start our day. Start our day. Yeah, I go back to my realm every night. My own world. Woo! I'm so excited, I'm hopping. Alright, I cannot wait. It's early in the morning, though. So I wonder if the street's still bustling. Oh, yep. Yeah, it's always, every, every day in REM. It's never a dull day in REM. You are the luckiest unlucky person I know. Thank you? <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. But now we have to walk across the whole city. That's the most dreadful part. But when we get there, oh, it's going to be so cool. So amazingly awesome and, and cool. And I really don't know how else to describe it other than cool. It's just going to be cool. Inner monologue. But is it really an inner monologue when I'm talking with you guys? I'm not going to be late. The sun is there-ish. I don't know what 10 a.m. is. I, I really don't know where the sun should be for 10 a.m. We're going to learn how to cook using magic. Yeah! It's time to cook. We're getting in that magic kitchen. And we're going to cook up some, some new techniques and abilities. We're just going to make our way all the way over there. Wait, which, where is the class? Did she tell me? I forgot. Wait, where is the class? Uh-oh. We're fake. We are not real. We are real. <laughs> you guys say such wild stuff that there's no way you can just be figments in my imagination. In the tower. Well, you can check the tower. Yeah, it surely is in the tower, right? There's no way it's not in the tower. Hmm. So pretty. You know, I've never actually got to take a good look over this bridge. Look at the water. Those guys, those are... Th 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 it is a canal of water. It's so cool. Hey, Shy Monster, thank you for the follow. Welcome to chat. Welcome to Skyline Rem. Hmm. How far down is it again? Did we get to the square yet? No, we haven't got to the square yet. Focus Rex is magic time. Okay, 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 okay. You're right, you're right, you're right. I can't I cannot fall behind. I gotta get to the magic area. Oh, he's got to get around this fountain. That guy looks cool. Do 
we're real, but we're not. Also, your head could totally come up with the wild things you say. We take after you. <laughs> oh boy, I'm so hype. Okay, maybe we can try getting there a different way. What if we walk this way? We freeze. Okay, no, we're, we're good. Oh, this is even faster! Oh, wait, the gate's not right here. We'll get more of a look at the area, I guess. Dang, this gate goes on for a while. Huh. I wonder if this gets closed off sometimes. Maybe. This is a dead end. I am in shambles. You've adopted my laugh. <laughs> Here we go. All right. Now we go in there. I, I, there's so many towers. I got confused for a second. It's this one. This tower. Hydrate? Okay, okay. Let's go in. Okay. Hello. I am here for class. Okay, class is not here. Where's the class? Hello? Class. Is it class time? <gasps> it's class time! Oh, it's class time! She's up there! Yes! We slowly walk forward, approaching the group at the top of the stairs. The members of the group would all be different heights and ages, with some of them looking to be around your age, and others being much older. <laughs> Men and women alike would mingle in the center of the room, for the most part seated on the ground, and the couple would have pulled up chairs. Penelope herself would stand on the small balcony opposite the staircase, looking through a rather large book carefully. Her hands gracefully turn each page, and she would trace her fingers down the page slowly. Harper would be perched on her shoulder, reading along with her. Huh. You awkwardly seat yourself in the back of the group, crossing your legs and taking a moment to observe your surroundings. You recognize the room from your previous adventure up the tower, although now there would be a long table to your right which holds a number of empty glass bottles. Behind that table would be some sort of medieval Bunsen burner, then a cauldron of water. You look back up at Penelope and Harper as they whisper to one another. Penelope motions to something in the page of the book, and Harper nods, giggling. She closes the book fully and hands it to the harpy, who clutches it tightly in her talons before flying over the group, leaving the room to put the book elsewhere. Huh. Alright, everyone. Apologies for the delay. Penelope speaks up. She places her hands on the rails, looking out at the group. We can go ahead and get started. Immediately, the idle chatter in the room dies down, and everyone goes silent. You look around at everyone as they train their eyes on Penelope. A couple would even take out some paper and a quill to presumably take notes. Huh. Today we're going to be continuing our discussion from last week on the components of viridescent alchemy. Penelope leans forward on the railing. Now, as we discussed previously... We can define alchemy as the process of transforming basic materials into arcane substances, better known as potions. Presently, we're capable of performing these transmutations with tools such as brewing stands, which are able to regulate heat levels. However, in the past, potions were carefully crafted over open flames by boiling the necessary materials in cauldrons. This world has potions too? So cool! You quickly place a hand over your mouth as a couple of members of the group shush you. Penelope continues. What we're going to focus on today are the fundamentals of potion construction, she explains. In essence, potions are simple. You can create a base potion as long as you combine the primary elements necessary, but the strength and effect the potion relies on. But the strength and the, the strength and effect of a potion rely on the reagents and possible modifications you make to the original recipe. For example, an awkward potion has no effect whatsoever when used, but it can be transformed into a potion of strength with the simple inclusion of blaze powder. Or, if you were to add sugar instead of blaze powder, you would produce a potion of speed. Penelope instructs without a single stutter or a glance at a notebook. She truly seems like she knows exactly what she's talking about. Well, some of these reagents seem mundane in nature. They actually have untapped magical properties sealed inside of their material compositions. Okay, what do any of those words mean? Successful alchemy relies on careful memorization and replication of a, memory, of a recipe, she says, trailing her hand along the rails as she walks down from the balcony. And the more complex the recipe, the more potent a potion becomes. 
You glance up as Harper flies over the group once more, landing on the long table to the right with a small pouch in her talons. She offers the pouch to Penelope, who opens it up and carefully places each of the items on the, within on the table. I'm going to demonstrate how to craft a complex potion, and then I will give you all your tasks for today's lesson. And we get a live demonstration? Oh, this is the coolest thing ever! You watch with bated breath as Penelope combines each of the fantastical ingredients on the table into one bottle. She tears apart crimson mushroom fibers, ladles emerald spider venom, and sprinkles mysterious shimmering powders into a bottle of water before placing it over the flame. You watch the liquid within the bottle bubble and transform, the clear water slowly becoming clouded and muddy. You glance back up at Penelope, who adjusts her monocle. She would be entirely calm, her composure absolute as she watches the potion's transformation. She holds out a hand to Harper, who would immediately hand her a thick cloth from nearby. Penelope uses this cloth to grasp the hot glass, taking it off the heat after mere moments and swirling it around before her audience. Whoa. This is a potion of corrosion. Just a simple, just a single splash of this potion would be enough to burn away fabric and cause damage to the upper layer of skin. Or, in a less serious case, it would certainly liquefy a hole through this very table. She sets the potion down. But, naturally, that potion is far too advanced for students. Therefore, I will be assigning you a much simpler potion to study. She clears her throat. <clears throat> if you've managed to snack a copy of Alchemical Creations and Arcane Effects, turn to page 513. On this page, you will find a recipe for a potion of gleaming. You'll have the next four hours to produce this potion using the resources we have in this tower and the ingredients you find around Erowyn. But wait, there's a textbook? Uh, once you finish your potion, you'll bring the final product to me, where I will test your accuracy through the recipe and the strength of your creation. Once again, she holds out a hand to Harper, who would hand her a strange hexagonal device. This scanner is known as a thermometer, and will allow me to see if you've even made the right potion to begin with. If you follow the recipe in your book, this device should show the thaumaturgical aspects of lux, potentia, and alchemia in your potion. If I can verify that your potion contains the correct aspects, we'll test it to make sure it produces the correct effect. Uh, Penelope? You're free to go. I'll be here if you have any questions, Penelope nods. Immediately, you watch most of the group funnel out of the building, taking books out of their bags and flipping to the proper pages. They'd rush past you and down the stairs to leave the tower, or they'd wander up higher to investigate the equipment. A couple remain in the study room, staring at their books deep in contemplation. You blink in confusion, standing up slowly, looking around in confusion. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Penelope and Harper would approach you. Yes, Rex? Did you have a question? Penelope asks. Uh, what if we don't have a book? <laughs> don't worry about it, Penelope states. Since this is your first lesson, I didn't expect you to have the textbook. You didn't even have knowledge that such a book existed. Just do your best and follow along with everyone else, all right? Perhaps you could even ask other students if you could borrow their text. Right. Once you find a recipe, all you have to do is locate the necessary ingredients and use one of our alchemy stations upstairs. I've ensured that all of the ingredients are in stock and available in Erwin for this particular lesson, she continues. You'll have the entire tower at your disposal, except for my office and all levels above that. Good luck, guy! Hyper waves to you. Okay. I can do this. Uh, thanks. All right. Okay. Um, we're gonna need to ask for help. Uh, hey, you two. Uh, hello. You approach two girls at another table. They both look- They both a book between them. They both look at a book between them, pointing at different parts of the text. See? It says you put the warts in here. But Miss Penelope did that part second in her presentation. Yeah, well, she's an expert. We gotta follow the books at recipe. What was the point of her presentation if it didn't follow the book? Uh, hey, could I see that book for a second? Why would a teacher have to follow a book she's probably read a dozen times? Why would a teacher stray from the material and teach something that isn't relevant? Can you just stop arguing with me and trust me on this one? But I don't think you're right. Uh, why don't we ask Miss Penelope then? Yeah, maybe we should. Fine! Fine! They both immediately close the book, picking it up and walking away. Never mind. Uh, maybe over here. Uh, hello! 
Do you two uh, mind uh, answering a question of mine? No? N not you two? You don't- Well, I, I did- I'm sorry, I didn't mean to uh, flip your trap door. What about you? Do you have an idea? Hello. You seem smart and not- No, you don't. Uh, is there anyone else to ask in this room? Uh, hello. You approach a young man in dark robes. He seemed rather focused on reading the pages of his book, using his finger to scan over every line. He'd have a sheet of paper and quill next to him, which he uses to take notes on the information in the book. Even though you're practically standing next to him, he doesn't seem to react to your presence in the slightest. Uh... Yo. He doesn't reply. He flips the page, taking a couple more notes. You glance down at his notes, trying to take whatever information you can from it. But you notice that his handwriting is entirely illegible. You frown, looking next at his book. If you can't garner information, then maybe you can look over the text. Only to realize that he's annotated all over the book as well. He can barely read it. Now you could be a doctor with handwriting like that. Hmm? The man glances at you. Oh, did you say something? Uh, d d d don't worry about it, man. You, you do you. Okay. Crap. Well, those two are busts. What do we do then? <sighs> Chat, any ideas? Asking people isn't working. How are we gonna make a potion? We don't know what we're doing. Hmm. Any ideas? Instead for proclaiming our premature death, just grab everything, wing it, find a spare, go kaboom, trial and error. It's all okay. Even I know these are bad ideas. Ask Sombra and Solus for help. I have to go find them though. Look at all the books. It's the librarians. That's so far away. Hmm. Go upstairs and ask more people. Uh. I just need a book. I just don't have that textbook. I just need a book. Hmm. Try finding a recipe. You're right. We can check a book. Look at the book you have. That's a good shout. Hold on. I've never opened this properly. Let me see if I can read it. You hesitantly look down at the book. You took this from the mausoleum what feels like ages ago. You almost completely forgot about it now, but if this book is anything like the textbook everyone else has, then maybe it could give you a hint on where to start with this potion assignment. At the very least, maybe it'll give you the base ingredient for those awkward potions that Penelope mentioned. Hmm. You seat yourself nearby, see it setting the book on the table in front of you and throwing it open. You narrow your eyes as you flip through page after page of personal notes and annotations. You're immediately reminded of the owner of the mausoleum and his story. His research. Second thought, is it really the best idea to be looking at a dead man's journal? Especially when he was trying to study immortality. Suddenly, a passage catches your eye. You notice a number of strange symbols doodled around the, ed around the rim of the page. The top of the page would read, Thalmic Aspect. This sounds like something Penelope mentioned, right? You lean forward, reading the passage. For the most part, you can't make sense of the author's words. They seem rushed and incomplete, as though they were scribbled onto a page in response to a sudden revelation. However, as you read, a particular passage stands out to you within the text. This leads me to my studies in Thomic Aspects. Among the schools of magic, Thalmcraft is the most comprehensive when it comes to categorizing and defining magic properties within all forms of material. However, my continued studies have allowed me to uncover an interesting new perspective. Since aspects are found within any substance, even seemingly mundane ones, it is entirely possible for me to transmute certain materials into others to make up for the resources I am lacking. Therefore, aspects aren't just mere components of magic. They were also the foundation of all matter. For instance, I was able to find the aspect Herba in Blades of Grass, and through alchemy, I utilized this liquidated aspect to produce a distilled draft of revitalization. It seems the mixture of aspects produces brews with intriguing effects. Though interesting, I'm certain that through further research, I can completely transmute one material into another, such as iron to gold, through the assistance of distilled aspects. 
I've attached a comprehensive list of thomic aspects to this passage, and hope that, with time, I can begin to analyze and measure the aspects found within various resources to create a catalog of reagents. Huh. You can't say you fully know what the author is saying, but a couple of the words stand out for you. Did this guy just say that thomic aspects can be found in anything? But if that's the case, what's the point of having potions having recipes? If someone were able to really extract aspects from anything, then there'd be no reason to emphasize the need for specific ingredients, right? You look back up at everyone else in the study. If an effect is brought on by specific aspects, then truly the same effect can be achieved with different ingredients, right? You just need to find the right aspect. Hmm. What were the aspects again? You pause, glancing back up towards Penelope. She said a potion of gleaming was made from Lux, Potentia, and Alchemia, uh, whatever those mean. Still, if your hypothesis is correct, then how are you supposed to find the aspects you need? Your gaze slowly moves down to the scanner in Penelope's grip. She said that the, thermo she said that the thermometer was able to display the aspects in whatever it scans, right? Maybe you could use that? You slowly close your book, putting it away for the time being and approaching Penelope. She and Harper would stand behind the long table, talking to one another quietly. As you get closer, you can't help but notice how frustrated Harper looks and how annoyed Penelope appears to be. They both huff at one another before noticing you. Penelope quickly composes herself while Harper folds her wings back in. Did you need help with anything, Rex? I, I just had a question. You said that Scanner, like, shows the aspects of stuff, right? Yes, that is correct, Penelope nods. When you hold it up to an item, such as a potion, it is able to read what aspects are present within it, and then display those aspects on the glass here. See? She withdraws the scanner and the potion of corrosion. She carefully holds up the glass of the potion underneath the scanner, motioning for you to join her at her side. You look over her shoulder as the scanner begins to give off a mild glow. You watch as shimmering images of unknown symbols appear on the surface of the scanner. You recognize these symbols as the same ones you saw in your own magic book, but you don't know what any of them mean. Uh, could I use that? What? Penelope immediately puts the scanner and the potion on the table. Why would you want the scanner? Uh, so I can make sure my potion is right? Penelope looks at you in confusion before shaking her head. I'm sorry, Rex, but you shouldn't need a scanner for this lesson. Just figure out the recipe and try your best to replicate it, all right? There's no need to overcomplicate this lesson. In fact, a study in viridescent magic, with a study in viridescent magic, you shouldn't need a thaumaturgical device for assistance. She returns to her spot behind the table. Uh, let me know if you have any other questions, all right? All right. Hmm. Okay. What? What? Okay. Um. Hmm. Hmm. I'm giving you my one brain cell. Hope you get this right. I, is there merit to what I'm talking about? So the book, to like pretty much dumb down what I think he was saying, is that it's like um, you know how in our world, everything is made up of like atoms and molecules. I think it's like that here, except with aspects. And so, depending on the aspects, it makes up different things. So, if I, as long as I can just get stuff with the same aspect and boil it down, I can make the potion. I just need to figure out how to, like, what, what, what aspects are in this, for instance, right? Do you have a, a, a alchemia in you, wall? Bit of wall? Do you have alchemia? No? Uh, I don't know. Hmm. Gonna have to figure it out. There's got to be something we can do, right? Can we wing it? Maybe I need to read my book more? No, I can't spend all day reading it. I'm on a time limit. Hmm. Maybe... Oh. You walk back out from the tower, confused. You glance at your magic book, flipping through a couple more pages. Surely you must have some hints on how to identify aspects without a scanner. However, no matter how much you search the pages, you wouldn't be able to find anything substantial. You groan, closing the book once more and putting it away. 
Oh, great. My first class, and I don't even know how to do the homework. You look around at Aurora Alley. There are aspects of magic all around you, but that that scanner? I won't be able to do a thing with them. Maybe you could try and follow some of the other students and get the same stuff as them? What if that stuff costs money? I also kill you if you spend money on ingredients for a single potion. I can hardly believe it! A familiar and loud voice steals your attention. I told you he mustn't hold that lapis lazuli up to the light, Solus! Hmm? Somber, don't be so serious! It costs us far more this time around than yesterday as well! What an absolute travesty! You look up towards the voices quickly. You catch sight of Solus and Somber walking towards the exit of the district, holding a couple more bags than the other day. Looks like Solus wasted some of their materials yesterday. Immediately, you pause. You notice a familiar device peeking up from Somber's bags. Is that a scanner? Uh, hey, uh, wait up, you guys! You rush over to Solus and Somber, jogging to keep up with their fast walking pace. They both turn towards you and their expressions immediately brighten. It's the guy with the pretty eyes! Look it, look it! Ah, hello again, Rex! What a wonderful coincidence! To think we would find you here once again two days in a row! This is splendid! Somber grins. To what do we owe the pleasure? Uh, actually, I could really use your guy's help with something. Oh, we're really good at helping with stuff. We do it all the time. Solus raises her hand excitedly. Indeed, Somber agrees. And I, for one, am personally quite interested in learning more about you, Rex. I still have dozens of questions for you, after all. Uh, can I borrow that? You point at the scanner in Somber's bag. They both look down at the scanner simultaneously. The magic disc? Solus asks in confusion. Somber removes the scanner, holding it in front of him. He raises an eyebrow. What exactly do you need this for? Uh, I have to make a potion. And I need the scanner to find aspects in the potion. Solus's eyes widen. That doesn't sound like normal alchemy. Right you are, Solus! I can't say I've ever heard of someone needing a thermometer to craft a simple potion. Why don't you just follow the recipe? I, I, I wasn't really given a recipe, but I was of a hunch. You take out your book, flipping to the page you saw before with the passage regarding naturally found aspects. You point to the passage. Ooh, somber, fancy book! This book says you can find aspects in anything, you try to explain. If I can just find the right aspects around Erwin using the scanner... And if I shove them all together in a cauldron, then shouldn't I be able to hypothetically make the same potion I need? Well, Somber hesitates. Well, you are hypothetically correct that aspects exist in all parts of nature. There's no way to tell that such an unorthodox combination will successfully cause an alchemical reaction. Perhaps it will instead cause something disastrous. Well, never know until you try, right? My siblings must glance at one another, and then back at you. Slowly... You watch both of them smile. That sounds so fun! Solus jumps up and down. It could very well result in something highly fascinating! Brilliant! So... Will you help me? Of course! I would never dismiss an opportunity to discover something entirely new! This would be completely and utterly magnificent! And I want to see something go BOOM! Solus chimes in. I assure you she's joking! I, I, I mean, I don't know how this will go, so maybe... What aspects will you require for your potion, Rex? Somber asks. What was it again? Uh, Lux, Alchemia, and Potentia. I see. Somber frowns, bringing a hand to his chin and narrowing his eyes. Solus giggles, walking over to you. <laughs> That's his thinking face, she says, bouncing on the heels of her feet. Gotcha. While I'm not certain where we may find Potentia, I may have a handful of ideas on how to locate Alchemia and Lux aspects. He explains. Alchemy is a thermic aspect representative of chemical science and, well, for lack of a better word, alchemy itself. I mean, I can't exactly use a potion to make a potion. It seems redundant. You sigh, patting down your pockets. Plus, you don't really have the funds to buy anything like that, you state. And we shall simply have to locate more common items that are easier to acquire, Somber states. Uh, from what I recall, alchemy may also be present within cleaning fluids. Uh, perhaps medical supplies. Like... Bandages? If they're sterile, yes. Somber nods. <gasps> Somber, do you think this is Rex's thinking face? Solus points at your face. 
I'm not sure, Solus, the young man states, tilting his head. Do you have an idea, Rex? When Solus sees Somber tilt his head, she tilts her own in the opposite direction. Somber, I'm hungry. We will pick up food later, Solus. I may know a place we could grab some free bandages, yeah? Well, come with me. I have an idea. Should be a pretty easy job. That makes that- if, 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 I hope that works. Because that would make this job pretty simple. This one does sound like one of the most complex. Aside from the one we don't know how to find. But they're coming with me! <laughs> Let's see. We just gotta get back to the main street. Which is, uh, this way. They're pretty cool, right, chat? I mean, they seem pretty interesting. Really high energy. I haven't seen them mellow out yet. It's like they're permanently on 13 cups of coffee. It's kind of cool. And I mean, they're really nice, too. They've been treating me pretty well. They're great. Loud but cool. Yeah, our ears will explode. I think mine, too, but I'm honestly here for it. I mean... One way or another, I'm always going to get screamed at. But at least these guys, they don't scream at me like Ella screams at me. Where she calls me a moron and an idiot. <laughs> going to blow them up? I don't think we're going to blow Well, we might. But eh, they'll be fine. Explosive energy. What a great way to describe that, actually. What an amazing way of describing them. Look up the word coffee and you'll find their photo. <laughs> Bombastic. Yeah, that, that that's also a really good word. Huh. This city just gets cooler and cooler every day. Oh, someone got a hydrate. Hold on, I'll do that real quick. There we go. Maybe we could put them in a potion and make a potion of boom. Yeah. Let's see. I think we're almost there. I can never really remember. This road just keeps on going and going and going. <laughs> can we not explode them? We're uh, we'll be fine. It's gonna be fine. I mean, do you do you have faith in me, chat? Do you, do you think that like my my math is mathing? That my magic science is soundproof? Maybe not. But maybe. Oh, did we just walk past Higgins? Oh, we did! Look at him! It's Higgins! <laughs> <laughs> I guess he's still patrolling the streets looking for something suspicious. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. We're almost there. This is a genius plan. Say it louder so he arrests you! <laughs> Alrighty, here we go. Let us retrieve some bandages. Here we go. Alice! Oh, she's still you burst into the room, throwing the door open dramatically. Alice! No! Ah! Alice screams, flying out of bed and rolling to the ground. Solus would begin to laugh behind you as Sombra just blinks. I oh dear, I, I believe you may have settled your friend, Rex! Uh, how are you still sleeping? Uh, actually, you know what? Never mind. Ella shoots up, her fists raised and bursting with flames. Her eyes are wide and blazing with unmatched intensity. But she quickly blinks away the glow in her pupils as soon as she sees you, soulless and somber. She turns bright red in embarrassment. Rex, give me a reason. Well, as you see... Outstanding! Somber exclaims, rushing forward. Solus bounces after him as they both marvel at Alice's hands. How in Ram did you manage this magic? It is absolutely fantastic! W what? I want to shoot fire out of my hands! Do it again! Do it again! Uh, uh oh. 
Can you only produce fire around your hands, or can you create it anywhere? The Swamp Bear asks. You're really warm, Solus Purse. Does the fire hurt? Are you fireproof? I want to be fireproof. I. Your eyes are able to glow as well. Is that a connected phenomenon, or are you able to controlling the glow independent of the fire? Uh, can you shoot fireballs with your fists? Okay, um, uh, maybe no more questions for Alice. You quickly rush over and nudge Sombra and Solus away from Alice, who clearly seem overwhelmed by their limitless who clearly seems overwhelmed by their limitless energy. She rubs her head, tightening her jaw and shooting a glare at the siblings. Who the heck are they? I mean a friend! Surprise! Then why are you new friends in our room? They're just helping me do some classwork. Alice groans, slashing forward slouching forward. Ugh, so they're magic nerds. Got it. She crosses her arms. I can only assume your class went well then. It was cool, but I've still got an assignment to finish from it. Do you have those bandages? Uh, yeah, right here. She digs into her pocket, procuring a couple of bandages and handing them to you with a quizzical expression. You hurt or something? Nah, I just need them to make a potion. You need bandages to make a potion. I swear I have a plan. Every time you say you have a plan, I doubt that you actually have a plan. Oh yeah, but I really have one this time! She sighs, shrugging her shoulders. Whatever you say, moron. Do whatever you're gonna do. Just don't get yourself arrested. Again. She glances at Solus and Somber, shuddering. <sighs> Take them with you. I swear I just woke up and I already have a headache. Sorry, I'll be back later, Ellis. Thanks for the bandages. Awesome. All right, we got the bandages we needed. That was pretty simple, all things considered. It was with Ellis. I thought it would be a little bit more painful, but it actually wasn't all that painful. That's good. All right. Now we head out. We got to figure out what aspect we got to look for next. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I'm stumped. Hmm. You exit the inn with the siblings, who both glance at one another and then back at you. Somber speaks up. That woman was quite interesting! Is she another one of your friends, Rex? Uh, Alice? Uh, yeah, she's kind of like my roommate right now. I would expect nothing less from an individual such as yourself! Truly the most riveting individual is a crawl the most inf in the most fascinating company! Somber states, placing his hands on his hips. I wanted to see her shoot more fire! We could have had a magic battle! Wouldn't that be fun? I'm uncertain if everyone would be ready for such a battle, so let's... So, uh, where should we go next? Ah, of course! Somber states, walking forward to stand beside you. But before we continue, please allow me to verify your finding specs! You hold up the bandages while Somber withdraws his thermometer. He scan hovers over the he bleh, bleh, bleh. He hovers the scanner over the bandages, looking through the glass with narrow eyes. Just like Penelope's thermometer, you watch the familiar symbols appear on the glass's surface. Brilliant! These bandages shall do nicely! They contain an optimum of alchemia, as you may see here. Somber motions to one of the symbols, tilting the thermometer to give you a better view. You'd be pointing at a turquoise symbol, which resembles a bottle full of bubbling liquid. So that's alchemia. I believe the other aspects on your list were Lux and Potentia, correct? Somber asks. I may know where you may find a source of Lux, although Potentia still remains a mystery. Where should we go? Have you visited the windswept woods, Rex? Uh, no? Is that here in Arrowin? But their dead city just has an entire forest? Well, it's not, it's not a forest. It's a wood, silly. Solus points out before pausing. Wait, do we gotta go all the way out there? The windswept woods are home to several interesting species of flora, Somber explains. One of them is called a glow flower. If we could manage to locate one of these glow flowers, I'm certain they would contain the lux you need. I mean, a flower with the word glow and it does sound promising. But somber, Solus whines. The woods are really far, and I'm hungry. Now, Somber looks back at her. Are you certain you cannot wait? I want to get food, or else I'm going to eat my own tail. See? Solus would turn around and reach for her own tail, only for her to be incapable of reaching it. She runs around in a circle, trying to catch her tail for some time before panting and giving up. <laughs> well, I what if I could reach it? Uh-huh. Oh, blast. Somber sighs, glancing back at you. Do you mind taking a brief detour, Rex? I do apologize for my sister's stomach. It's no problem. You point at the scanner in Somber's grip. We can go and grab some food, and on the way we can try to find potential with the scanner, you suggest. 
How about we're killing two birds with one stone? That is an absolutely brilliant plan! Somber exclaims. In that case, let's waste no time! Come along, Solus! Food? Yes, food. What would you like to eat? Cupcakes! You like cupcakes? Solus gasps, slowly turning to you. Her mouth still ajar, she walks over to you and grabs your shoulders. You've never tried Lawrence's cupcakes? Who the heck is Lawrence? Somber! We gotta go to Lawrence's bakery! He hasn't tried his cupcakes! This is awful! To water side, then! To water side! To... Water side? Oh, we're okay. Yeah, lead the way, I guess. We're going to water side. Huh. Cupcakes? Lawrence? Well, I guess you're gonna find out soon enough. And I guess I could go for some pastries. That sounds pretty good. This is a, uh... There, oh, <laughs> we charge onward, I guess. Solus doesn't need paths. Where Solus goes, she doesn't need roads. <laughs> We're from here. Oh, is this way? Do you know the Muffin Man? I used to be able to do a pretty good impression of that guy. Make sure you don't get lost this time? How could I? These two seem to know where they're going. At the very least, they live here, so there's no way they don't, right? Cupcakes are just what Solus needs more energy. Oh, yeah, maybe this is- maybe her diet's part to play in her high energy. This place is so gorgeous. It's almost like it gets more gorgeous every time I go through it. Oh, and this way? Oh, look at the city. Look at that aqueduct. Absolutely gorgeous. Look at that! Is that a telescope? That's a huge telescope! The gigantic tree. Look at the lake. Such a beautiful lake. Oh, that's a cool looking building across it. Huh. It's huge. It's a big building. It's right on the river. Huh. Oh, we're here? We're here. Okay. You and Solus and Somber all open the door to the bakery by the water. The sweet scent of baked goods fills the air as you enter. A large man would dust off his hands as he turns to you, having just finished rolling out a length of dough. Hey. Welcome to Break Bread, the best place in Arrowwind for homemade sweets and treats. Looking for anything in particular? You notice his apron says, kiss the chef on it, as he smiles warmly at you. Oh, uh, hey, Lawrence! The Solace shouts, run running forward, her tail swaying sightly behind her. Oh, hello there, Solus and Somber. The large man replies with a hearty chuckle. <laughs> what brings both of you here? Ah, well, once more, Solus and Somber has called for your absolutely fantastic baking! Somber replies. Setting his scanner aside to address the man. I'm um, guessing you guys come here often? You could say they were rather familiar with Lawrence and his baked goods. Samba rubs the back of his neck. I want a cupcake! Solus announces. Oh, and a muffin too! The blueberry one! The baker, Lawrence, walks away from the counter, approaching one of the many shelves on the opposite side of the room. From the shelves, he removes a festive vanilla cupcake with rainbow sprinkles and a blueberry muffin. He carries them back over to Solus, who hops up and down happily. Oh, those do look good. Zomber hands Lawrence a number of copper coins as Solus accepts her treats happily. Zomber places a hand on Solus's head playfully as they both turn back to you. Solus would immediately begin to devour the muffin. Now then, where were we? Uh, did you notice any signs of potential on the way here? Unfortunately not, Zomber admits, holding up the scanner again. There was nothing in our path that indicated it contained any aspects of potential. He sighs, looking at the glass surface. <sighs> Perhaps you will find some traces on the way to the woods. Maybe. I mean, we do have an entire city to... However, you cut yourself off, your gaze lingering on the screen of the thermometer. A symbol would appear on its surface as Somber unintentionally scans Solus's cupcake. It would look like a light blue hand grasping at a lightning bolt. Somber notices your vacant expression, trying to follow your gaze. He would notice the symbol as well, and you notice his eyebrows raise quickly. 
He pulls the scanner away, looking down at Solus's cupcake. Solus. Don't tell me that was it. I'm afraid so. Hmm? Solus looks up from her meal. Solus? Can we see that cupcake? She looks down at the cupcake, holding it away from you both, pouting. No way! Solus, I'm not sure how, but your cupcake may be the key to Rex's success! Then he can get his own cupcake! But we're not certain the aspect will be in other cupcakes! But this one is mine! You jump forward towards the cupcake, reaching to take it out of Solus's grip. Cupcake thief! Solus shrieks, Sober! I'm sorry, Solus, but it is for the greater good! But I want it! I assure you that I will buy you another cupcake! Give me that cupcake! No! Solus tries to push you away, extending her arm away from you and holding the cupcake with nothing but the tips of her fingers. However, as you continue to try and force your way forward, Solus would lose her grip on the cupcake, and you all watch in horror as it tumbles to the ground, the frosting splattering across the wooden planks. You killed it! Oh! You drop to your knees, picking up the cupcake carcass from the floor. You look to Somber. Please tell me it's Solus Potentia! Somber whips out the thermometer quickly, hovering it over the, over the scene. You and him both wait with bated breaths, only to sigh out of relief as the same light blue symbol appears on the glass surface. <sighs> Phew. My cupcake! Solus pouts. Ah, uh, what's a mess? <laughs> Somber laughs awkwardly. He glances up at Lawrence. Would it be rude to uh, purchase another? Lawrence just sighs, his expression entirely unreadable after witnessing the whole thing. Will you drop it on the floor? You have my word that it should be consumed immediately! Sorry, Solus. Hm. The cat girl huffs. As long as I get my cupcake, I guess it's okay. Somber purchases another cupcake, just like he promised, passing Lawrence the proper amount of copper coins. He then hands it off to Solus, who would then immediately seem to forget she was ever mad at you. So, uh... Where to next? You said the windswept woods? Indeed! Somber nods. The woods are located past the farmland on the far northern side of Erwin. Hmm. I don't think I've been that way yet. It smells like strawberries up there and gunpowder, Solus announces. Okay, interesting combination. We shall lead the way, Rex. Worry not! Somber walks over to the door, holding it open for you and Solus. Solus stuffs the entire cupcake into her mouth quickly, skipping out the door before you. Oh, uh, thanks. Okay, that's two ingredients. We've now got our hands on some alchemia and some potentia. Now we just need the Lux, which we will get from the woods. Now we just need to get to the woods. I wonder what the fastest way is there. Ooh. I don't think I've gone this way before. Thank you for the hydrate. Let's do that real quick. <laughs> Dang, the city is so pretty. These are some cool stairs, too. It's right next to the Diagoduct. My favorite aqueduct in the city. I wonder how far these woods are. I mean, they must be way out of the way if I've never seen them before. Just how big is this city, I wonder? This is turned to <laughs> it's really funny, Nissa. <laughs> hmm. Oh, we're getting onto the main street now. Hi, right, that's a good sign. Good Solus. She just sprints everywhere she goes. <laughs> These guys are pretty cool. Honestly, the people I've met so far in this city all seem really talented and unique and just cool in general. It's really kind of heartwarming in a strange way. I mean, how often do I meet new people in my own world? Not too often, I don't think. 
And I'm making so many new friends here. I'm meeting so many people. I don't know. It's kind of cool. Okie dokie. We're going further this way. We're almost heading back right towards where Aurora Alley is. Hmm. It's a beautiful city. These lanterns, I wonder how to keep them lit. <laughs> I wonder if that's someone's job. Where's the canal? I don't think I've ever crossed this bridge before. I've never really had a need to? Huh. Well, there's a first time for everything, I guess. It's crazy. You can live in the city for a long time and not even go everywhere in it. These two seem like they've been everywhere, though. How long is this main street? It's actually enormous. I didn't realize. I guess it cuts all the way across the city, so that makes sense. But this city is so big! Take care, white elicorn. Have a great night. Let's see. Ooh. Why are we almost there? I'm seeing trees. <laughs> Who knows this? <laughs> Whoa. Well, what the heck is this place? The buildings are all wooden. What? Look at all the lampposts. Is that a river? No, it's a straight up river. Huh. This is pretty cool. The trees are still thick in this part of the city. Yeah, I guess this is less dense. Whoa! Are those farm plots? Check this out! Wait, are those grapes? Those are grapes on a vine! Another river. This place is so pretty. Are there people in the farms? These are farms! <laughs> oh, so pretty. This. This city is actually enormous, bro. How long have we been walking? For 10 minutes? Ooh, what's that? It's like a ranch? Ooh, these must be the woods. Up here. It's slowly getting denser and denser. You've been walking for the last two years, you just didn't notice. <laughs> ah, these are the woods. Whoa! Whoa! Beautiful. Actually breathtaking. 
You look around at the vast and gorgeous wooded area, staring in awe at the emerald green leaves as they peacefully fall to the forest floor. You walk a couple of steps forward along the path, observing every blade of grass and flower. This place is so pretty. I still cannot believe that you've never visited the windswept woods, Somber exclaims. It is absolutely stunning! Sometimes I'll find a flock full of birds and just hang out on the ground and then I get to run through them and they all fly away! So, uh, what are we looking for again? Of course! We're looking for a glow flower! Somber states. These flowers are often located in darker portions of the forest. I believe I've usually found them under dark oak trees, as the branches and leaves are large enough to hide them from the sun. We just gotta be super careful out here. Even though we're still in the sea, there are still monsters that live in these woods. Ooh! Solus wiggles her fingers at you in a creepy manner. Uh... How is it safe? I'm certain- I'm certain we'll do just fine. If we end up in a conflict- Oh wait, I read so- Let's roll it back. I can never tell who's talking between these two. I'm certain we will be just fine if we end up in a conflict, so this is the capabilities to defend us. Yeah, that somehow makes me more nervous. For now, I suggest we just follow the path, Somber states. Otherwise, we may very well get lost. I can lead the way, Solus raises her hands. Don't rest too far ahead, Solus! Somber states, watching her as she skips ahead before turning to you. Let us go, Rex! That's uh, sure. Let me hydrate. Look at her, she's bounding. Such a pretty area. She's so happy. <laughs> there goes a pounce. <laughs> <laughs> She really does pounce. It's like she's an actual cat. What's on this way, though? There's a fork in the road. Which way does Solus choose? This one? Alright. <laughs> Queen, thank you for the bits! I appreciate it! Take the last up by bits. Like, happily. Hum yum 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 yum. I love that I reduced swords that I have to beat my next edit. <laughs> Forest is so pretty. I guess it's not gonna be near a clearing though. I need to find a dense dark part. I definitely don't want to stray from the path though. That sounds like an easy way of getting lost. Are there campsites? Oh, people make a little tents out of here. They camp out here. That's so cute. Brother, how are you not getting lag? The power of prettiness rises above. Oh, it's a supercomputer. <laughs> Such a pretty place. Oh, is that a beach? I guess this is the other edge of the city. Yeah, that looks like the ocean. Negative influence from the voices in my head. Hmm. No glow flowers there, although I think that is a dark oak tree. So the dark oaks are like the oaks, but darker? I'm gonna assume. Maybe bigger too. Huh. Pads are lame, return to grass. <laughs> How big is this forest? There's still nothing. Oh, I think I see something up ahead. Is that it over there? On the right. This looks like it might be it. Is this it? They're glowing. These are glow flowers. Is this it? You and Solus and Sombra all look at the flowers in awe as they glitter and shine in the darkness. So glowy! Solus's eyes dilate. These are precisely the flowers we were searching for! Fantastic! Sombra cheers, holding the thermometer down at the floor. And it is just as I predicted! They indeed contain remnants of the aspect of Lux! Right, so now I can just pick them up, right? Sombra and Solus both nod at the same time. 
Can we take a couple? Solus looks at Somber. I don't see a reason why not, Somber states. Do you have a need for them, Solus? Nope, they're just pretty. You reach down and pick one of the flowers, pulling it up from the ground. You stare at the petals in awe, reaching a hand up to the flower's center, where the glow is emanating. The moment you touch the flower, you can feel the magic inside of it rushing up your arm, causing your hairs to stand on end. Whoa. However, your attention is diverted. This strange green goo drips onto your hand. You're taken aback, shaking the cool gelatinous substance off your hand quickly. But then you notice more and more beginning to fall to the ground from above you. You quickly look up, only to see a massive slime dripping down from the tree branches, threatening to fall on top of you and the siblings. Uh, guys! We gotta move! You rush over to Solus and Somber, quickly shoving them out of the way as a jelly-like creature splats to the ground before coagulating into a massive blob of slime. Oh dear! Somber states, quickly stumbling to his feet and adjusting his glasses. And that's a big slime, Somber! Solus exclaims. Indeed it is! He states. Solus, you know what to do! I get up too! I bet this thing doesn't like fire! Oh, where is it? Oh, there it is! That's a slime! Whoa, okay. There we go! I set it on fire! Just like I promised! <laughs> Whoa! Solus is casting spells! That's really cool, actually. Yeah! Oh, it's like a big- it's like a big bouncy ball of slime. That's so cool. <laughs> Look at this thing! Ow! Okay, it does hurt though. <laughs> Whoops! Hey, oh, 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 there's something on my head! What was that? It put slime on my head! It put a slime on my head! Alright, that's fine. We're just gonna keep chopping it up. Thanks to careful with fire. I know what I'm doing! I'm not like Ellis and I just burn bushes. Just gonna keep chopping this thing up. Maybe we can cut it down? I love it! It's a big slime ball. Ow. Ow. This thing does hurt a little bit though. I have to be careful. Man, are these like the monsters in REM? This is freaking cool if it is. I'm being shot at. This thing is shooting at me with slime. It's spraying slime. We're gonna some fire to the ground is ah slime! I got it. That's good. <laughs> Come on then. This is awesome. Are these the kind of creatures I can fight in Rem? These are absolutely wicked fights. Oh, this thing is hard to hit though. Solus jumps back, raising up her staff and pointing it towards the creature. Rex, watch this! I'm gonna take it out right now! She places both of her hands on the base of the shaft, lowering your head, her mouth curling into a feline grin. Potentia! Uh, Potentia? Potentia? She pauses, lowering her staff and looking back at Somber. Somber! What's the spell again? Are you serious right now? Is Potentia Perde! Somber calls back to her from behind a tree. Oh yeah! Then Solus looks back up at the slime, raising her staff once more. Potentia Perde! The end of her staff would begin to glow brighter and brighter before the magical power eventually condenses into a ball. She fires the ball directly at the slime, her body recoiling from the sheer power of her attack. As soon as the ball of magical energy makes contact with the slime, it explodes, causing smoke to rise up from the creature's gelatinous flesh. Oh my god! You gonna do that earlier? Oh, what? It shrunk! Ow, and I got hit. I got hit again. What the heck? Oh, it's- there are two now! It chopped in half! Alright, that's fine. I just gotta chop them up. I went down, it didn't even matter. I just got right back up. This is awesome! This rocks, man! <laughs> Two slimes! This is so funny! Oh, there's slime on my head! Oh, I got slime on my head! Get it off! There we go. Got it. Woohoo! Yeah! This is so awesome, man. 
Look at Sola, she's casting her little magic ball spell now that she figured out what it was again. Is Somber hiding? Oh, he is. <laughs> I guess one of them is a fighter. That's fine, though. I might be there with Somber if I didn't have this cool magic gauntlet. Come on, get in this slime. I wonder how many chops these things take. Come on. I just gotta chop these bad boys down. This is so awesome! Ah, slam on my head! Come on, how do I kill, kill, chop up this cube of, of, of goo? Go down! Oh! I did it, I think. No, oh, they're now four smaller pieces. Now we just gotta chop these up. I can't chop them up. They don't take damage. Oh, um, let's. We, we, we can stomp them out. We can stomp them out. Yeah! <laughs> yeah! It's working. Just gonna stomp them out. <laughs> yeah! We did it. High five, Solus. Yeah! <laughs> nice! <laughs> that rock. <laughs> it was so fun. You pant wiping the sweat from your brow and the slime off your clothes. We did it! And Solus cheers, jumping up and down. Solus, you have some slime on your cloak. Stand still for a moment, all right? Somber walks out from behind his tree, placing his hands on Solus' shoulders to keep her still. He then withdraws a cloth from his jacket, wiping the slime off of her. Is that normal in these woods? Somber pauses. Well, finding slimes in the windswept woods is not uncommon. I cannot say the same for a slime of that size, he states. It was quite the massive foe indeed. Did you see how it exploded? It went boom, spot, and then went all over the place. So I could see. Oh, for this, for a flower. That was so fun, Solus beams, placing her hands on her hips. It was quite the enjoyable expedition, Somber nods, turning his attention to you. I must thank you, Rex, for inviting us to search the city with you. This has been utterly brilliant. <laughs> I should be think one thanking you guys for the help. It was our pleasure, Somber smiles. You gonna head back to make the potion now? Solus pouts. Yeah, I only have... Wait, what time is it? You rush out from under the dark oak tree, trying to catch a glimpse of the sun. You notice its slow descent on the horizon in panic. Has it already been almost four hours? No oh, crap! I gotta get back! I don't have a lot of time left! Hold on! Did you have a time limit? Somber blinks. Why didn't you say so to begin with? We would have assured that the necessary items were gathered with an ample time! Ah, uh, what do we do now? So um, Liz starts uh, running around in a circle, picking up on the panic and urgency in Somber's voice. Uh, I have to go, but thanks again, you guys, for everything. Oh, you may find us at any time to discuss your potential success in your experiment. Solber waves at you as you rush away. And tell us if the potion explodes. Solus calls next to him. All right. See you guys later. Thanks for the help again. You guys are really cool. I'd love to see you around some more. Okay, we gotta go. Okay, no, this is fine. We just gotta follow the path out of the forest, right? If we follow the path of vengeance, we'll find our way out. And then all we gotta do is just hustle our way back. Oh, you're gonna be doing a lot of running. Oh, this is gonna be a real workout. But that's okay. You know, honestly, today was a pretty good day. I had a lot of fun. You know, it beats getting almost murdered by like a cultist a couple times or something. But that was so, was so cool. Fighting a slime. And there was no risk or anything. Like, I was perfectly fine. I came out of it a-okay. Especially with those two there. Huh. <laughs> that's awesome. Use the, this is my first time doing this. Use whatever excuse may not work. No, I have to impress her. I, I, I have to impress her. She she gave me a free lesson. I gotta I gotta really show my my keep. I gotta earn my place. Okay, what way am I going? <laughs> I'm completely lost. Uh, let's go down this way. Huh. This is so cool. Look at these farms. There's so many plots, and they all look like different crops because all the leaves are different. Okay, that's fine though. We just gotta keep going. Oh, I see that tree. I recognize that tree right there. Okay, we're good. We just gotta keep running in a straight line and eventually we'll get there. Once we get on the main street, it should be really simple. I gotta impress Cantaloupe? Yeah. 
We just gotta hustle. It's easy. What a good day, though. So we've got our linen bandage, we've got the sprinkles cupcake, and we got the glow flower. Hopefully, if they're right. Okay, what do we do when we get there? Um, We find a uh, cauldron, and then we cook it up, I guess. Oh, I didn't get this far. I mean, we know... We, she combined some stuff. Maybe we just gotta combine stuff, too? Ah, oh, I'm not sure. Will it even be the same? What if these things have a bunch of excess aspects in them? What if that gets in the way? Oh, gosh. You got this, just become Usain Bolt. I mean, we've already crossed uh, two districts, I think. Now I just gotta keep going. It'll cross like two more. <laughs> and then what? Hmm. Well, hopefully it'll all work out. We'll see. I mean, we'll never know unless we try, right? You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. I believe in you, Fatur. We're almost there. We just gotta, we gotta climb up those stairs. Oh gosh, you gotta climb stairs. And we have to climb the stairs of the tower, and then we'll be good. Where's the cauldron? Did I see one when I was going up? Oh, we'll have to find one anyway. Hey, questioning the stuff now. It's a bit late for overthinking. Yeah, you're right. All right. Oh, we'll make it. We're just gonna sprint. <laughs> oh, so many steps. All right. Do you guys ever just fly up steps? You know, take them three at a time. I do that sometimes. Use fire to propel yourself faster. I'm gonna set myself on fire. That <laughs> sounds like a terrible idea. Alright, this way. And then this way. We just need to find the uh, bridge, right? It's on the other side of the bridge. And then once we get there, we cross it and then bank left. <laughs> oh, Main Street's so huge! Is it that way? No, it's definitely not that way. Because we need to cross the canal. We need the bridge. There it is. We got to cross the canal. <laughs> okay, this way. Now if we bank left. There it is. There's the tower. We just got to get there. Okay, get in the tower. Throw the ingredients together in like a big pot. Like cooking. It's like cooking, you know? It's just like cooking. Like we're making a tea. Maybe not like we're making tea. Like we're making something. Okay. Okay. All right. We're looking for cauldron, 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 cauldron. Is there a cauldron in here? No cauldron, no cauldron. All right, let's go upstairs. Maybe it's a cauldron in here. Aha! Wait, that? Does that work? Is this a thing? Or is it this the thing? But which one's the thing? Is this thing? Does it matter which one we use? So we're just use A1. We'll use this one. All right, this one right here. Okay. You stand in front of the strange cauldron hesitantly. You notice there would already be some water inside it and a glow emanating from under it. You kneel down to observe where the glow is coming from. After all, wouldn't a fire be dangerous since the floor is made of wood? However, much to your surprise, there wouldn't be a fire under the cauldron, but a floating pale orb. The orb would give off some flame-like wisps of heat. And when you reach out to hesitantly touch it, it wouldn't burn you. And this world keeps getting cooler and cooler. You stand back up and look into the simmering water. You withdraw the three ingredients from your pockets. The bandages, the smooshed cupcake, and the glow flowers. You also withdraw your magic book. You carefully flip back to the passage, rereading its words carefully. Aspects are not just a base of power, but a base of environment as well. Atomic aspects and blade and grass make their stretch much easier in my workspace. Hey, whoever you are, don't fail me here. You lean over, grabbing a large spoon from a nearby table, beginning to mix up in the simmering water in the cauldron. Truth be told, you have no idea what you're doing, but you've seen witches in movies stirring like this, so you must be doing something right. You cautiously drop the bandages into the cauldron, jumping away as soon as you do in case of an explosion. Nothing happens. You poke your head over the top of the cauldron, watching as the bandage sinks into the bottom slowly that it absorbs more water. Okay... You begin to stir again. Next, you drop the cupcake into the water. It makes a small splash as it impacts the water and sinks down with the bandages. And you recoil from the water in slight fear. You pause. Is the water slowly changing color? It doesn't look as blue as before. And then again, that could be because you just put a bunch of white frosting and vanilla cake into it. You hesitantly put the spoon into the water, continuing to stir. Lastly, you withdraw the glow flower. 
He holds it over the cauldron to submerge it in the water as well before pausing. Your mind wanders back to when you watched Penelope's demonstration. When she was showing you how to make a potion, she didn't just put the whole mushroom in, she broke it into pieces. Following her example, you begin to pluck the petals from the body of the flower, dropping them one by one into the water. Hmm. You watch as the water slowly begins to change. Now you're certain of it. A light blues of the water pale and desaturate, eventually gaining a glow of its own as you finally submerge the stem into the cauldron. You reach for the spoon, continuing to stir the water around, watching everything bubble together and blend into a radiant silver substance. Did I do it? You hesitantly take a glass bottle from your pocket, dipping the glass into the substance and collecting as much as you can. Ow, ow, hot seam, hot seam! You stare at the potential potion for a long time. Did you really just perform alchemy and make a potion? Oh, that's so cool! Wait, you can't get ahead of yourself. You don't even know if this is actually the potion you're supposed to make. You don't even know if it's functional. The only way to find out is by presenting it to Penelope. Alright. Omen of truth. It looks like a potion. It shimmers like a potion. It's silvery. That's a good sign. Let's bring this to Penelope. Here we go. Penelope. Penelope would sit alone on the lower floor, another large book in her hands. She would read over the text quietly, adjusting her monocle with her free hand as she turns a page and crosses one leg over the other. Harper wouldn't be around anymore, and most of the students have already departed, leaving several glowing silver glass bottles on the table before her. Okay, I think I did it. He would announce her presence proudly, causing her to glance up from her book. She closes it in an instant and meets, stands to meet with you, and stands to meet you with a smile. Welcome back, Rex. Are you ready to put your potion to a test? Oh, ready as I'll ever be. <laughs> Somehow, I knew that you'd find a way to complete the assignment. She holds out her hand, taking the potion from you and placing it on the table. Next, she grabs the thermometer, hovering it over your potion to test the accuracy of your aspect. Can't help but cross your fingers as the symbols appear on the screen. Hmm. Is that a good hmm or a bad hmm? She turns the thermometer around to reveal the symbols to you. She smiles. Lux, Alchemia, and Potentia. She confirms. Perfection. Yes! You pump your fist into the air, much to her surprise. <coughs> Sorry. She places the thermometer down nearby, picking up your potion once more. Still, judging by the substance's luminosity, I can assume that it's not particularly strong of rue, she critiques. That being said, it seems to contain all the necessary aspects. So we may consider this potion, uh, this a potion of gleaming, albeit a weak one. It's still awesome. In the future, I believe a bit more glowstone dust, and perhaps a dash of redstone would assist in strengthening your mix to give off a greater shine. Uh, actually, I didn't use any of that stuff. She pauses, setting your potion down to look back at you. I beg your pardon? I couldn't find a recipe, so... I just decided to find things that had the right aspects. You... She hesitates, opening her mouth to speak, but unable to find the words to say. So that's why when you asked to borrow this... So that's why you asked to borrow this scanner. You planned on crafting this potion without following a recipe. She brings her hand to her chin. But how did you conclude that your plan would work? I read in this book that aspects are sort of in everything, not just in specific potion ingredients. You offer your book to her. She accepts the book, trailing her fingers over the intricate designs on the cover. She flips through the pages, looking over each of the annotations. This is a Thaumonomicon, she mutters. <laughs> just when I believe that uncovered all of your secrets. She closes the book, offering it back to you. What exactly did you use in this potion? Uh, well, you describe your process to Penelope. You tell her about the bandage, the cupcake, and the glow flower you fought, you fought to find in the woods. And after that, I use the cauldron you have upstairs to mix everything together. Uh, the one next to the ritual thingy with the uh, floating cube? You explain. But once it looked like it was incorporated, I just bottled it up and gave it to you. Hmm. Was that okay? What you used was not a traditional cauldron. But a crucible, Penelope explains. It's not often necessarily used for viridescent alchemy, 
but instead a far more complex and advanced magic known as Thomic Alchemy. She looks back up at you. Using your knowledge of Thomic aspects, you chose to stray from traditional methods and create this potion using rather unconventional means. Is that a bad thing? No, not inherently. She shakes her head. In the end, you did manage to complete the assignment and present me with a potion of gleaming. However, you did not perform the assignment as I had intended. She rubs her brow. You used a different method from a completely different school of magic to achieve the same product. How curious. <laughs> well, I, I guess I'm a pretty unconventional guy. Indeed. She brings a hand to her chin, staring at you for some time. Rex, do you mind if I test something? It will only take a moment. Uh, sure, I guess. She picks up the thermometer one last time, except instead of training it on an object, she points it directly at you. She stares at you through the glass in the scanner's center, and awaits the tool's results. However, many moments pass, and nothing would happen. She narrows her eyes, tapping the side of the thermometer numerous times. What in the rem? Uh, is everything okay? She tries to scan you once again. It's not... scanning you. She looks back at the thermometer, turning it around and quickly scanning herself. Within an instant, several symbols appear on the glass surface. She narrows her eyes, looking down at the scanner, and then back up at you. This shouldn't be happening. Oh, uh, what's wrong? She sighs. <sighs> to dabble in thumbcraft, not to mention having a thumbonomicon in your possession. I had a hunch that perhaps this is not your first time being using supposed dark magic. I was going to use the scanner to test that theory and figure out if you've done anything that would affect your soul. But the scanner isn't recognizing you as a person. She looks up at you with a serious expression. Instead, it sees you as... Nothing. That doesn't sound good. Am I dying? No, no, I don't think you're dying. You notice her jaw tighten, but she quickly places the scanner down. It's probably just faulty. I'll look into that another time. She turns back to you. Until then, I suppose I have no way of verifying my theory, so I'll just have to assume that your soul is as average as anyone else's. If you're sure... Regardless, she continues, shaking off her previous alarm, you've exceeded my expectations. Despite your unorthodox methods, the fact that you were able to grasp more advanced thomic alchemy at a remedial level, and your possession of a thomonomicon. She smiles. <laughs> I'm interested to know more. So... What does that mean exactly? I believe it's safe to say that you're the only silver-eyed dread in Erewhon. She explains. Additionally, you're the only one I have heard of that to fall out of the sky. You have many intriguing qualities about you that I would like to study for myself. You don't have to look so nervous, Rex. I'm still a teacher above anything else. I'd like to make another arrangement with you. All right. What's the new one? If you would allow me to learn more about you and your capabilities, then I will continue to teach you more magic independently, she states. But I still don't have the money for lessons. Oh, don't worry about the cost. For the sake of understanding you, I'm willing to give these lessons free of charge. In that way, we'll trade knowledge for knowledge. She holds out her hand. What do you say? <laughs> Are you kidding? This entire lesson was so freaking cool. I just want to learn more. I'm in. You take her hand and shake on it, grinning ear to ear. <laughs> I look forward to teaching you then, Rex. Penelope states. Now then, it's getting late. I'm certain you're tired after today. You should get yourself home for now. Yeah, you're right. Uh, take care, Penelope. And thanks again! <sighs> Man, I can't wait to tell Solus about the day I just had. It is definitely getting dark out. I'll hide back so I can talk her ear off before she goes back to sleep. Maybe she'll tell me about what she was doing all day. <laughs> Man, this is freaking awesome! I can't wait for the next day. <sighs> Tomorrow's a new day. Can't wait to get there.
can't deny it. I can't just make it. 